Hello, welcome to episode 205 of the Epic Film Challenge to A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die from 1973, The Wicker Man. Classic British horror film starring the one and only Christopher Lee and Edward Woodward. I was aware of the iconic image from the end of this film and the fact that it starred Christopher Lee, but apart from that, I knew nothing about this film. So I was really intrigued to check it out and to tick it off the list. I watched the first 10 minutes and I turned it off because I was so intrigued that I wanted to share it with Connie. So I said, look, give it 30 minutes, and if you don't like the film, you can stop watching and I'll continue. As you can tell, she's not in this video. She tapped out after 23 minutes. Uh, yeah, not for her at all. She felt too uncomfortable with the stuff that was happening in the film. I tried to argue that the main character was also feeling uncomfortable, so that was by design, but she was having none of it, so I had to share that. And it does get weird very quickly, but I loved the central intrigue of the plot as the film starts in that opening 10 minutes. We follow the character played by Edward Woodward, who has such a great name, by the way, uh, as Sergeant Howie, a, a policeman who comes in from mainland Scotland to this island called Summer Isle. And he's there because he's been sent a letter along with a picture of a young girl saying that this girl has gone missing, has vanished from the island. Uh, Rowan Morrison is her name. So he turns up to investigate. And the inhabitants of Summer Isle, the villagers, are very unhelpful. Uh, and many of them even say that there is no such girl who lives on Summer Isle and never has been. And Howie starts noticing some weird things, you know, there's missing pictures, there's, there's all these clues that lead to the idea that maybe this girl was a part of the island, but they're covering up the fact that she's missing. And he soon begins to suspect that everyone in Summer Isle is complicit in perhaps the death of this young girl. And right from the get-go, again, in the first 20 minutes, it gets really weird. And I love how they set the film up at the beginning with Howie at a, a church meeting, uh, it shows you that he is this devout Christian, like it really goes to lengths to show you how much of a Christian he is. And then I love the credit sequence, just him flying in on this kind of seaplane uh, over these like kind of Scottish kind of islands and stuff. Really, really cool. And then the music feels very appropriate to, to Scotland. And the music is very important in the film as well. Uh, it really ties into the, the, the characters that inhabit Summer Isle and uh, is a key element of what makes the film kind of really unnerving to me. So Howie, he's there to investigate this girl and, you know, soon realizes that this is not a normal community uh, by any stretch. And he realizes that this, this Summer Isle island is kind of very much cut off from the way that uh, civilization has been working for, you know, a lot of recent, you know, history. Like, it just, it feels like it's in the Dark Ages in a lot of ways. And we get the backstory on that when Christopher Lee's character, Lord Summer Isle, gives Howie the backstory of how his grandfather kind of uh, um, started the, the, the community there and how he brought over his uh, pagan uh, beliefs and, and practices and so on. And so this is very much a... A community where paganism is practiced to the the nth degree and they they really believe in it and they do a lot of weird stuff uh, because of it and so you have these two conflicting uh, religious ideals from Howie who is this just absolute kind of uh, fire and brimstone Christian and then these these pagans and the very questionable things that they may or may not be doing but I mean right from the beginning you see that they're getting up some weird shit like these like orgies out in the out in the the darkness and stuff and how he becomes you know very much aware of that from the the first night that he spends on the island and he takes it upon himself to to find out what happened to Rowan Morrison he wants to find out what happened to this missing girl and he believes that uh, again they're all complicit in perhaps the murder of this young girl so he goes deeper into this obsession of finding out the truth and what I love about the character of Howie uh, and the way that Edward Woodward portrayed him is how just tenacious he is how uh, how, how much of a drive he has to find out what happened to this girl, to do his duty as a lawman. He is so committed that he is literally willing to stand up to hundreds of people. Because I'm thinking like, dude, just get out of there and get some backup when, when you realize what, you know, something is amiss here. But he stands his ground and he just, you know, gets in people's faces and said that, that you know, this is disgusting what you're doing and stuff and, you know, you should be ashamed of yourselves and... You know, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I think you've murdered this girl. Like he, he just throws it all out there, and there's something really uh, kind of scary in a way of seeing a character facing all these people who quite clearly have a, a screw or two loose, 
and, and he is just just being right in their face with what he thinks about them and what he believes that they might have done with this girl. So I love that that mystery. Uh, again, they, they kind of throw in these ideas of, of what might have happened to the girl. So you think you know what's happened. Oh, that's the that's the case. And then, you know, how he investigates further, then, it, then it's not the case. So it, it switches back and forth. And there's a, a nice couple of twists towards the very end of the film that I thought were really well done. And I wasn't really trying to figure them out. I, I don't think it's like a wild twist or anything, but I was quite yeah, surprised. And then I had this creeping dread of I knew where it was going uh, and, and where the final kind of moment of the film would end up. I loved the uh, the performance of Edward, Edward Woodward, as I said. Hell of a mouthful uh, to say that name, but he was just so good. And there's a brilliant scene when he first meets Lord Summer Isle at his uh, mansion. And he's talking about, you know, his religious beliefs and stuff. And how can you not believe in God? Uh, and Christopher Lee basically said, well, God's dead to us, you know. And Edward Woodward just stands up and just goes like, what? Like, I'm gonna, I don't use clips very often at all in these videos, but I have to include Edward Woodward's what from uh, The Wicker Man, because I think it's pro possibly the greatest um, <laughs> exclamation of what in a film ever. So take a look at this clip. What? <laughs> I just like, there's so many things going on in that facial expression. Like there's disbelief, there's anger, uh, you know, just apps, just in incredulous. Like he, he just can't believe what he's hearing from this guy. And he's so pissed off and conflicted and just da hardly daring to believe that he just said that God is dead to them. What? <laughs> He's so perfect uh, and uptight. And I love how, you know, to me, someone like that who is so strong in their religious beliefs to, again, the nth degree, you know, uh, and I don't want to get too into that rel religious, you know, religion debate or whatever, but I almost see all of them as a little bit, you know, too over the top. And so it, it's a really interesting character study of these people just utterly committed to uh, these ideals and, and so on. And I just really found it fascinating from a character perspective, from the main character to, you know, the, the pr protagonist to the antagonist, uh, and, and how they all play, played into the, the, the larger scheme that was being constructed on that island, and it's really interesting when you reach that final moment, which is just ridiculous. Um, I don't know whether to go into some spoiler talk with that, but outside of that, uh, it looks really nice, you know, where they shot it all on location in Scotland, and there's just some really creepy stuff. There's this shop of oddities and stuff that's like a jar of old like crusted up foreskins like it's it's some really rough stuff in the film and you know old men singing about the, the the local barmaid and and how like you know the best place to be with her is in between her her two legs like they, it gets really like sexual and there's a scene where she's like seducing him from the other room when she's dancing around naked and stuff and i just loved descending into this this spiraling hell for this character of Howie, like this absolute straight-laced, you know, um, devout Christian lawman who's just trying to do the right thing and kind of defend his own religion in a way. And he very much tries to do that with, with the people when, when he really confronts them, he kind of brings his religion into it and, and how he thinks that they're just completely wrong and that they're, they're praying to this kind of false entity that doesn't exist. And then, you know, Christopher Lee kind of throws that back in his face. And so you have all these conflicting, uh, you know, ideals coming into the, the forefront. But it is a really chilling film. Just the idea of this civilization that is so backwards. And again, almost in the Dark Ages that, uh, you know, you're not quite sure what they're capable of. And you, you never really get a sinister feeling from them at any point. It's more of this sickly sweet kind of evil, which is almost even more scary to me. Like, you never really see Christopher Lee lose his temper. You know, he doesn't become that typical villain. And, and all, all the other characters as well. You know, they have these intentions that you just, you know, you, you wouldn't touch with a, with a barge pole. But they're, they're done with such conviction that it, it's scarier to me. So I think this is a very effective horror film in a different kind of way. It's not this kind of, you know, ah, kind of horror film. It's this, ooh. Ooh, could get under your skin kind of horror film. I, I really liked it. And again, the music, these kind of um, folk songs and stuff, just again, it gives the impression of something so carefree and innocent, but underneath the surface, it's, it's, a, it's a whole other thing. So is, the, is it a film you should see before you die? I absolutely think it is. I think I, I must have seen a director's cut because there were some scenes that were a lot worse looking than the rest of the film. So there must have been scenes that were added back in. But you know, again, Edward Woodward I thought was great, particularly in the last scenes of the film. Like he really brings it and just really affecting in that in that last scene of, of the film. 
And yeah, I think it's a film you should see before you die. I think it's a great horror film. It's a, it's a different kind of horror film than I've really seen before. I mean, I've seen like, you know, uh, films where people, people come into these communities that are kind of completely different and there's something sinister going on beneath the surface, but this one just was really intriguing and kind of almost hard to watch at times just in terms of like just how weird it was and how you know again sinister everything was underneath the surface i'm repeating myself at this point but uh i really and i like fish out of water stories as well so there's a little bit of all these elements that i like in films and i just thought that it was really well done and i yeah definitely a horror film to revisit again and again i think i was a big fan of it and yeah, I think I'll leave it there really. I mean, the ending is shocking. You know, the ending is shocking and I I'll do one little little moment of spoiler talk. So yeah, love the film, leave your thoughts down below, but here's one moment of spoiler uh, discussion, if you will. Okay, it's actually a different day, but that aside, uh, a little spoiler, not even a discussion, but just a spoiler moment I want to talk about. Obviously the ending of the film, where how he gets put inside the Wicker Man and gets burned alive. You know, it, it's horrifying, it makes for an incredibly memorable ending to the film, but the thing that bothered me was that he was held in by a, a wooden door, and it looked like they just kind of tied it up a little bit, and he's kind of there on the door holding onto the bars, and just kind of like shouting out to God and stuff, and... It makes for a fitting end to the character, don't get me wrong, I understand it, that he kind of accepts his fate, but you'd still be trying to barge that door open. You know, just a couple of shots of him trying to just really just throw all his body weight into that door to, to knock it open, and maybe just a close-up of, like, the, the bindings not moving at all. You know, it just felt like he, he didn't struggle after that point and had just resigned himself to it. And I guess, you know, if he did manage to escape, what would happen then? He's got hundreds of people against him, but still, I just think it would have added that extra kind of element of believability if he'd really tried to break out of that door a little bit that's my only kind of uh, qualm really with the entire film i think so i had to mention that i, I just think that it's um yeah a little bit more of a struggle towards the end that would have been a little bit um, more preferable to me but i still thought that he played that moment wonderfully especially when he really resigns himself and just sits down and it's just kind of begging to god to kind of deliver him to heaven and stuff and great performance so there we go that's my thoughts on the wicker man and again leave your thoughts down below if you have any and i'll see you in the next video